People love secrets, but what they love even more are conspiracies. Dan Brown's best-selling novel, The Da Vinci Code, is chock full of both. From secret meetings of clandestine organizations to massive cover-ups that led to deaths of thousands of people, it's easy to see how this novel has met with such great success. Dan Brown is clearly a masterful storyteller who weaves together a fabulous murder mystery, all the while drawing on some intriguing and scandalous themes. Hi, my name is George Oviatt, and I'd like to invite you to join me in an expedition, one in which we'll seek to separate myth from truth and legend from reality. Through its vivid and fast-paced presentation, Brown's novel succeeds at raising many questions which have challenged long-held assumptions about Jesus, Catholicism, and Christianity in general. Whatever your religious persuasion, however, it seems evident that at the very least, this person named Jesus, who lived about 2,000 years ago, is one of the most interesting, compelling, and controversial figures in all of human history. Brown has in this one figure, Jesus of Nazareth, all the components necessary to formulate a fascinating piece of literature. This historical figure, according to gospel accounts, challenged religious institutions, fought social injustice, and even performed miracles like rising from the dead. He has been an inspiration to literally millions of faithful men and women around the world. As such, we will be spending a good deal of time examining the claims that Dan Brown makes about Jesus and trying to determine what is real and what is a figment of Mr. Brown's fertile imagination. So the question is raised, does the Da Vinci Code paint an historically precise portrait of Jesus? And what about the suggestion that underground covert organizations, like the Priory of Sion, are the guardians and keepers of secret documents which could literally bring Christianity crashing down? How about the idea that Christianity is just a repackaging of older mystery religions? We will answer all these questions and many more as we continue forward on our expedition. But first, for those of you who haven't read the book, seen the movie, or heard the hype, we need to start at the beginning and explain what it is that we're actually talking about here. So here's a brief synopsis of the plot. The premise behind Dan Brown's novel, The Da Vinci Code, is actually quite simple to grasp. There are no real complex twists or turns in the plot. In fact, many have critiqued it as being somewhat predictable. It's not the story that captivates people. It's the story within the story that grabs our imaginations. Jesus of Nazareth, the royal descendant of King David and heir to the throne, according to the novel, married Mary Magdalene, she herself also of royal descent. The union resulted in the conception of a child, which in turn represented the perpetuation of a holy royal bloodline, which continues to this very day. We are informed by the background story that once Jesus was crucified, Mary, in fear for her life, flees with her daughter leaving the country, eventually ending up in Europe. However, hundreds of years later, as the infant Catholic Church ascended to power within the Roman Empire, the truth of the relationship between Mary and Jesus is suppressed in deference to an alternative gospel story, where Jesus is viewed and worshipped as divine. The Catholic Church allegedly upgrades Jesus' status to that of God at the Nicene Assembly in 325 AD. This all done at the behest of Emperor Constantine, who apparently sees the growing church as a political tool, which he can effectively manipulate in order to bring unity to his empire and to ultimately exercise power and control over his people. Conversely, Mary Magdalene would eventually be downgraded to the status of prostitute despite the testimony of scripture and never given the honor which was hers as the wife of Jesus. The decision by the Nicene Council, according to Brown, led to the wholesale persecution and killing of all other variant Christian sects who opposed the officially sanctioned Christianity as defined by Constantine. The truth of the life of Jesus and his marriage to Mary would have been lost forever except for its protection by secret organizations throughout the centuries, whose leaders range from Victor Hugo to Leonardo da Vinci himself, who according to Brown encoded the nature of these secrets into his most well-known masterpieces. 
Our first stop in trying to separate fact from fiction will be to examine the historical record. And in order to do that, we have to go to the Bible. Specifically, the first four books of the New Testament, the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, otherwise known as the Gospels, are the accepted historical accounts of Jesus' life and work. And in order to begin to answer some of the questions raised by the Da Vinci Code, we have to ask, how do the Gospels view the person of Jesus? And what kind of relationships do they portray him having? The canonical Gospels are not what we would refer to as biography. That's a 20th and 21st century temptation for us to think of them as biography, but they're, they're really not. They focus in on a specific period in the life of Jesus of Nazareth. And um, the, the picture or the portrait that they paint of Jesus is one of a person who comes from humble origins, uh, of, a, of a person who is winsome, charming, uh, speaks authoritatively, and who um, is someone who is out of sorts with those who are the religious leaders. He's not out to make friends for himself with those who are powerful and influential in his society. In fact, he frequently speaks against their practices. He is, however, considered to be the friend of tax collectors who are reprehensible in that time. They're Jewish people who sided with the Romans or went over to the Roman side and profited from the Roman uh, occupation of uh, Palestine. And as well, he's considered to be a friend of gluttons, drunkards, and prostitutes. So it gives you an idea, Jesus did not keep company with the people that would per be perceived as being powerful and influential. He really didn't seem to care what the impression was that he gave to those who were uh, the, the movers and the shakers of his time. Well, the Gospel writers repeatedly emphasized both the divinity and the humanity of Christ. As an example, Luke 1 talks about how Jesus was conceived of the Holy Spirit by a virgin in Nazareth of Galilee. Uh, John 1, on the other hand, emphasizes the fact that Jesus was God and involved with every aspect of creation. He, he understands his occupation, his life, to be about trying to reconcile people to God, uh, about living a life of obedience before his Father, and ultimately about a cross. He continuously speaks about death on this cross, on this Roman cross, to his disciples. Oftentimes they seem kind of numb to what it is that he's saying. They seem unreceptive. They don't get it. Or at times, like with Peter, uh, Peter rebukes him for even thinking that way because they want a political Messiah. They want the son of David. They want Jesus to give them, uh, as the old saying, uh, a, chi a chicken in every pot and two cars in every garage. They want to be great and strong once again. They want to hold their heads up high because they're Jews. And Jesus doesn't seem to be about that. He sees himself as the son of man. And he keeps on using this term, the son of man, which comes from Daniel 7 to refer to himself and kind of takes the political in, uh, ideas away from uh, the language that's used about him. In one sense, he fit right into the social and religious context of the times, and yet in another sense, he didn't fit in at all. He was uh, ordinary and at the same time extraordinary. He seemed to have a nature like ours, but then the next moment he would accomplish feats that were clearly supernatural. So that's the tension that we really see evidence throughout the Gospel accounts. Probably one of the most remarkable propositions made by the Da Vinci Code was that Jesus and Mary Magdalene were married. So is it possible that these two were married?